I've had the dubious uh, honor of being involved with the software patents issue for almost uh, almost 20 years now. So I'll do a quick run through of this. And I think this is a very important issue for all of us in the FOSS community to understand because there is a lot of push to bring in software patents uh, by hook or by crook in uh, within India. Uh, so we in the FAST community, we are uh, up against uh, highly, very well-funded multinationals and others. So it's very important for all of us in the FAST community to really understand what are software patents and uh, what is, you know, are they really congruent with the philosophy of FOSS? So uh, let me quickly run through that. So I'll just quickly uh, talk about what are patents, what are the four freedoms of FOSS. We don't need to go into details on that. but. You know, this whole contrast between FOSS and intellectual property, some of the practical issues with uh, software patents, um, what what we are doing as FOSS United and how you can help. Uh, so the word patents actually comes from the Latin word pater. You know, it, it basically meant to lay open. Uh, if you go back to the Industrial Revolution, what used to happen is that many inventors used to die. And when they died, the inventions were completely opaque. You know, people couldn't really operate those inventions. So, uh, so the whole system of patents really came into being uh, and it kind of into the fruition during the Industrial Revolution. Uh, the social contract was that, you know, let us know what exactly you have created and we will, as the state, give you a 20-year monopoly so that once that 20 year monopoly is like, you can exploit it, you can you know, monetize your invention in those 20 years. Uh, and then once that period is over, that invention passes into the commons. Now this commons is a really important uh, term, I'll come back to that later. So that was the contract, you know, that something has been invented, there has been a lot of thought gotten into it. It should not disappear with the passing away of the inventor. So. So this was a contract between the state and uh, the inventor, and uh, which is in, in intended to benefit society at large. Uh, the important thing to remember about patents is that it is a monopoly right to exclude others from using that invention. So for example, Amazon had a patent on one-click shopping, and uh, during a Christmas shopping season, uh, they you asserted it against Barnes and Nobles and prevented Barnes and Nobles from using that patent. And Barnes and Nobles had to rewrite their software and their e-commerce website to comply with the Amazon patent, so to avoid violating the Amazon patent. Now, if you compare that with the four freedoms of FOSS, you know, you have the freedom to run the program, to study the program, uh, the freedom to redistribute, uh, you know, modify the software. So, uh, so this is where you know uh, Professor Steven Weber, who happens to be Tarunima's uh, professor, uh, made a brilliant observation. Uh, he said that property in open source is configured around the right to share, not the right to exclude. And uh, I highly recommend uh, everybody to read uh, Professor Weber's book, The Success of Open Source. Uh, now, if you look at the current uh, default, you know. Uh, you look. You have FOSS running on supercomputers. You have you know billions of lines of code of FOSS, and you're combining you know hundreds of thousands of methods, just like a musician combines notes of music to create a song. We combine thousands of programs and software methodologies to create a software program, uh, and because of that, it's extremely hard for let's say a law-abiding uh, software developer to say that okay, you know these are the programming methods I'm using. Uh, am I actually violating these software patents? It's it's really, really incredibly hard to do that. Which is why 38% of all patent litigation in the US is around software. So it, you could couch it as business methods or you know software patents, et cetera. Uh, so we've created you know, workarounds to protect uh, the open source community from the risks of software patenting. Uh, organization like the Open Invention Network, etc. I'll I'll explain that a little bit. So here's a quick show of hands. You know, given the quick summary that I've given, do you think so FOSS and software patents are compatible with each other? Can I have a show of hands? Uh, if you think yes, can you say yes? 
Okay, not too many hands raised. Uh, <coughs> see, this is a really big challenge for the FOSS community. In fact, uh, off late, what has been happening uh, is that there is a whole category of entities that have come up called patent trolls. And these are not inventors. You know, uh, These are people who go out and acquire software patents, and then they uh, litigate against other people. Uh, so these are no also called non-practicing entities. So one of the most ridiculous examples of a non-practicing entity was a company called Innovatio, which basically said that we have a patent on connecting to a Wi-Fi network. And they went around suing hotel chains, uh, even coffee shops, and they said that, hey, you're violating our software patent. And if you wanted to contest that, you know, the law, legal fees might be, let's say, $5,000. So they would say, you know, give me $2,000. And uh, so they actually successfully raised quite a lot of money from uh, coffee shops, uh, from hotel chains, et cetera, et cetera, before uh, the patent was invalidated through prior art. Uh, if, if, let's say, you're a software developer and you are litigated against, you know, your cost of of uh, cost of defending yourself and you know assuming that you say that I'm not going to give in, I'm going to fight it all the way to the bitter end, your cost of fighting that software patent could go up to three crores, uh, it could go even much higher if you are a much larger organization, depending on the kind of law firm that you hire. Uh, Open Invention Network, which is one of the uh, which is one of the organizations that I represent along with my counterpart Biju Nair here. Uh, this is one of the organizations that was formed to protect Linux and open source community from patent litigation. Uh, so about 16 years ago, Microsoft said that Linux violates our patents, and uh, they uh, were selling off a portfolio of theirs which could have fallen into the hands of patent trolls. <clears throat> so what Open Invention did was to very quickly uh, get a bunch of money and uh, buy out those patents from a front company that we had created called Allied Software. Uh, and then we kind of started sucking out patents that could be used to attack the open source community from the market. Uh, so the last 16 years, Open Invention Network has spent about $100 million in buying out patents from the market, uh, funded by Google, IBM, et cetera, et cetera. So FOSS United uh, and others are members of Open Invention Network. Uh, the other exercise that the community has been doing is basically something called patrol. In fact, uh, do a search on the Unified Patents website. And uh, what uh, Unified Patents does is uh, patents, open source pat patents that are used to attack op the open source community. Uh, it gives out bounties of $2,000, $3,000 and uh, you know, invites people to find prior art that helps invalidate those patents. And that's been a very successful program. and. Uh, I'm very happy to say that actually many of the people who have won those bounties are actually Indians, you know, working with law firms or law students, et cetera. So if you want to, you know, dig some prior art and do some good for the open source community and earn, say, $2,000 in the bargain, I think uh, take a look at the patrol program. Uh, Richard Solman, the Free Software Foundation, Software Freedom Law Center, uh, the Open Source Initiative, Red Hat, uh, all these organizations have you know, vigorously fought against software patenting. Uh, why is it important to push back against software patenting? It's because uh, you know, it, it basically goes against our developer freedoms. You know, just imagine that you're a software developer, you just come out of college, you created something uh, which is very valuable and it becomes big you start monetizing it, and suddenly somebody comes up and says, hey, you're violating my patent. You have not even copied somebody's work. You know, you just created it out of your own creativity, imagination, your own inventiveness. And somebody comes up and says, hey, you're violating my patent. Uh, so it basically fundamentally militates against developer freedoms, which is why you know, the FOSS community uh, has taken a very harsh uh, critical stance against it. There are also many, many practical problems why software should not be patentable subject matter. You know, one is that software is already protected by copyrights and um, uh, trade secrets. Uh, the other is that software is essentially abstract ideas, and it's you know many uh, researchers have found that it's very difficult to draw boundaries around abstract ideas. 
Now, if you, let's say, you know, own a piece of land, you can say, you know, this property adju is adjacent to it on the north, or east, west, south. So you can do clear, you know, boundaries around your property. But it's impossible to do that around software. So it's almost impossible to avoid violating a software uh, patent. The other problem is if you uh, read a software patent, you can't make head or tail of it. You know, it'll be 50 pages long. You can read it three times. Uh, you know, for example, I was reading a patent on machine to machine communication, which has been granted by the Indian Patent Office. And you know, no matter how many times you read it, you can't make sense of it. So it's, there's just no way you can avoid violating a software patent. In case you read a software patent and you know, later on you're found to have infringed on it, willful infringement, the damages are much higher. So it's a very, very weird kind of a setup where you know uh, everything is meant to be uh, exposing and opening up things, but you can't read it. And uh, if you look at the world today, it is moved from proprietary innovation to collaborative innovation. You know, if you look at all the new technologies that are being built out, it is you know AI, ML, machine learning, Internet of Things. It's all happening in the open source community. So the open source model of collaboration, community, and the shared ownership of knowledge is what is you know, driving innovation at an exponential rate. So if there was any logic for allowing for software patents, that's also kind of gone into the back burner. Uh, we have been fighting against this issue because uh, there is, for example, recently a policy called the Deep Tech Startup Policy, which said that we should have more software patenting in India to enable deep tech invention innovations. Uh, there was a policy on um, uh, a parliamentary committee report on IPR which said that to enable uh, innovation in AI, we should have uh, software patenting. We should change the section 3K which pertains to software patenting. So there is a lot of push. And the reason there is a lot of push is because patents are a monopoly. And if I own a, if I own a patent, I can start you know, going out and saying, hey, you violated my software patent and start charging royalties. And that's a billion dollar business globally. Uh, we have also launched the end software patents website as a resource. So I would encourage all of you to take a look at it. Uh, we met the economic advisor to the prime minister. We met the director general of patents. We met people in the ministry of IT to, you know, uh, and the principal scientific advisor basically to explain why software patents should not be allowed. And we've met with uh, you know, leaders of industry, directors of IITs, uh, some of the top industry leaders in India. The unfortunate situation is that even you know, when we talk to directors of IITs and uh, you know, top uh, industry leaders, people who have been in the industry for 30, 40 years, even they don't really understand the implications of software patenting. So it's a really hard slog to explain why we should not have software patents in India. So uh, so the last slide, how can you help? Uh, we can invalidate uh, patents through prior art searches, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, our study we, that we did with uh, the Software Freedom Law Center found that the number of software patents growing, uh, being granted in India is going up uh, in the last, it's ex exponentially increased uh, since 2016, uh, when the patent office changed the draft patent manual. Uh, so, so basically, if you are a software developer, if you you know have uh, some spare time, start looking at the patents that are being granted by the patent office. Some of them, in fact, some of the patent applications, if you read them, uh, you'll just start laughing because you know these are such obvious ideas. You know, for example, uh, blockchain wallets. And somebody's filed something on that. Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of these kind of patents that are, I mean, just on the face of it, absolutely obvious. Uh, the other is, you know, uh, reach out to me. We have a working group on software patents. Uh, I don't know if Rahul is part here, Rahul Sai Porori. Uh, he is one of our volunteers. Reach out to me, uh, become part of that working group, uh, and also help us, you know, write uh, more articles on the end software patents website. So with that, uh, thank you so much. And uh, I hope you know, we can push back against software patents and protect developer freedoms. <laughs> How am I doing on time?
Yeah. So uh, employees in the big tech companies like uh, Google, Meta, uh, they are filing the patent for the company. Yeah. They are come up with the idea and that company file the patent for them. Yes. And um, in against of the company give them the good amount of incentives. Like yes. Money and the promotions and everything. So uh, why don't that uh, the open organizations uh, encourage the people to file the patent under under the open organization and then the open organization directly give the in incentives to the developers? Yeah, so I think that's a, so there is a methodology called defensive patents where you can, you know, file, uh, you can basically, you know, like you file a patent, you can just put that in the defensive patents uh, repository and that becomes prior art. So then somebody else says, I want to patent this. So patent offices do look at some of these uh, resources. Uh, this is an expensive business, you know. So if you look at, say, o Open Invention Network, they're you know, spending $160 million on the, you know, the defensive network around uh, Linux and open source. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if there are volunteers who are willing to chip in money. In fact, one of the things I'm thinking of is uh, when I was looking at some of these patents, I was thinking maybe I should just reach out to Paytm and others and say, hey, give us some money so that we can find some prior art and invalidate it. Because some of these uh, wallets, for example, I mean, this is like, I mean, it's been a, it's a solved problem. You know, why should somebody get a patent on that? So yeah, I think it's a good idea. Um, don't you think it'll kill the Indian like IT, uh, the complete Indian IT uh, market and the Indian IT economy if you, if India just gives up on software patents? It won't kill it, but you know it'll be a huge uh, nuisance because, I mean, let's just say let's just take an example. You know, you build an e-commerce website. Uh, in the U.S., there are eleven thousand patents on e-commerce. There are some five thousand patents on online shopping. I'm sure you know you write a you write a you create an e-commerce website you will be violating at least hundreds of patents uh, you know, on online shopping or you know e-commerce. So this is uh, fundamentally incompatible with the FOSS community's uh, four freedoms, and uh, it's a very uneasy coexistence. You know, see this is exactly if you look at say if I draw an analogy with the gun lobby. You know, why is the gun lobby in the US so strong? It's because they are very well entrenched. If we allow the software patents lobby to be well entrenched in India, we will also have the same level of difficulty. So if we, if we prevent software from being a patentable subject matter in India, I think we will save the FOSS community a lot of pain and agony and difficulty down the line. Which is why it's really important to be proactive on this issue at this point in time. If there are no more questions, uh, do reach out to me separately. I'm around. Thank you so much.